Ladies and gentlemen, DJ is here with another Advanced Wars by Web replay analysis. You see, I'm at a bit of a loss for words. This is one of the nuttiest, craziest games I've seen in a long time. Just strap in, buckle up. Even you, Mang's in the booster seat. Strap in, because we're in for a nice, classic banger. Now, there's a lot of weird things about this. The map is weird. The CO matchup is weird. The players involved are weird. So let's start off with the map right here. Stitch Monster. Now what exactly is Stitch Monster? It actually looks like a bastardization of uh, Scavenger actually. You got the ports over here, you got the pipe scene, you got the three bases over here. But instead, you actually have a little bit of a sea over here. So instead of transporting going along shoals and scavenger, you actually have a sea that you have to uh, move your units across. You start off with a black boat, two black boats actually, one guarding this comm tower over here. You could elect to move to move units for the for three black boats. Okay, we're out of control. We've got three big boy black boats on the scene. But we'll start off with this one, transporting your infantry to this starting off weak side. It's weak because, you know, you got all your bases over here, you can only transport infantry. However, if you do so choose to invest in a lander, this side could become your strong side because you'll be transporting two vehicles per turn. Or two landers even, just go one lander here, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Endless supply of units if you have a lander, two landers. Whereas this could be the weak side because you have to hook around the long way, you have to break through the pipe seam. So typically you're going to have a strong side here late game, early game you might have a strong side here. So it's an evolving, which I really like about this map. I've never played it on myself, but I've seen a few games on it, and it evolves. Some people start off strong side over here as, as the top player, then eventually goes over here to the HQ. It's quite fascinating. I've seen battleships built, pipe runners might even make there's a scene. Uh, and then you have this black over here that can transport your infantry over to the front lines on your beginning strong side later weak side sort of idea or you can just like to keep it there to prevent your opponent from capping this typically honestly it actually depends on the map i mean it depends on the players this could be under blue's control this could be under purple's control it could be vice versa depending on the game it really depends so there's a lot of variability in this map there's a lot of variability which is why i love it now let's look at the co matchup because we're doing tier one fog Typically, Grit is tier 2. Well, it depends. Usually on 2 base, you can slip down to tier uh, 2 rather than tier 1, but it's a 3 base map. Artillery can be pretty strong. You got a lot of force. You can poach an artillery in this force, for example, and you can guard 4 properties. So artillery are quite overpowered on this map. Quite strong. It's a fog map. Typically, you don't see as many artillery in fog as you would in standard. However, this is one of those maps where artillery are quite strong. You can build a battleship. It will guard basically everything ever. Uh, you can put an artillery around your HQ and defend it forever. You can put a battleship over here to really shut down an HQ if you really want to, uh, HQ threat or if you really want to. So grid is actually quite strong. Comparatively. However, I do prefer Hawk in this matchup here. Why? Because Hawk is a strong, established tier 1 CO. He's got super strong powers. He's got that 10% extra firepower bonus. With one comm tower, he is guaranteed to hit KOs. Uh, infantry on infantry on cities, two hit KOs, infantry attacking an infantry, another infantry following up, automatic KO. Same goes with tanks, same goes with like-minded units. So, Hawk is quite strong, and then Grit doesn't like the, uh, the battering that's done by Hawk's CO powers. He's got the Black Storm, he's got the Black Wave, knocking down his units to 8 HP, then Grit's snap pay it, his super shout. They don't do as much when all his units have 8 HP, 7 HP even, so it can depend. But I, I like Hawk in this matchup here, but you can't just go, charge blindly into Grit. As Hawk, you want to build up that unit advantage. You want to, well, income advantage at least. Because you're probably going to be behind on unit advantage. Because Grit's going to have established front lines. You're going to have to run into the trenches. It's going to be like World War One. The artillery's going to blast your face off. And you got to keep going and hope that your numbers, your income advantage, and your teched up units are enough to push through that trench and just overrun Grit. Because he's going to have better defenses than you. He's going to be prepared. He's going to have more units probably by the end of the game. But you have to use your superpowers as Hawk. You have to use your income advantage as Hawk to really push past. So it's an incredibly interesting matchup. I am excited to see the spicy matchup that you very rarely see. I don't think I've ever seen this matchup before, any submitted game. Uh, so we're in for a treat today. I hope you guys recognize how awesome this uh, matchup is. Now, 
the players themselves. Let's start off with Izanagi 007. You guys recognize him. He's been in a few other games, mostly losing games, as I like to say. I like to shit on him a good bit. He's a funny dude. Uh, Izanagi 007, I like to joke. He's like, uh, they ask for James Bond 007, like, where's Bond? And then Izanagi shows up and like, who's this weeaboo? And he's like, I'm Izanagi 007. And he has like a, like a squirt gun or some shit. That's Izanagi 007. He's no James Bond, but he's, he's a character. And then we got Sujid, which apparently is a tribute account to me. And now if you guys haven't escaped the uh, zoo within the past five months, you might have enough brain power to process that Sujid is D just backwards. Uh, so he's a tribute account to me. At first people thought, oh, is that Deej? Oh man, he's an 1100 player? No, I'm not, you know, like, come on. It's not me, it's a tribute account, I appreciate it. He's not impersonating me, so he's cool. If he did, then I would never show any games. So he's, he seems to be a cool dude. He's about a 1200 level player. Isnagi's a 1300, 1350 level player. So there's a bit of a, a disparity in the scores here. However, we do have the CO matchup, and I do think Hawk is better positioned to win this matchup. So it sort of evens it out, brings it to an equal playing field, in my opinion. Grid is harder to play in general as well. You have to adjust your tactics. You have to be more passive. You have to really work on vision. Vision's not going to come too easy in the center. You, Grid's probably not going to want to fight in the center too much. There's no mountains, so you have to rely on a lot on recons. Uh, your artillery are kind of out of position. There's no forests here, only over here and here. So most of the battling is probably going to be done in the forest on the side, if I had to guess, is Grid, if, I was his, if that was his game plan. So, without further ado, let's get into this game. Because it's a banger. In the top right, playing as Grit Boys, we got Izzy. Izzy 007. We already got the black boat moving. We already have a difference. Mr. Tsujid over here is already getting off the uh, black, uh, uh, the comp tower to get the black boat. You're going to see the typical, oh, grab the base, transport the infantry. You're going to see this inf infantry over here, transported over here. There are no chains actually over here. There's very little chains in general on this map, if any at all. Uh, most of the, this little chain right here is about the only thing. Uh, most things are separated by about four tiles rather than three. Uh, so you're typically going to see that. A lot of people like to go over here, get a head start, uh, you know, landing over here rather than taking this infantry and capping the port. I agree with the setup. I think it's pretty standard at this point. So, so far so good. Nothing too ordinary. You want to bring this across the river rather than going for that property because the follow-up of this Infantry on the airport will capture that property anyway. So far, so good. Looks like Izanagi succumbed to getting his black boat off of that comm tower. Ops to bring it over here, ferry that infantry probably over here to capture this, maybe get that little chain going rather than over here. We'll see what he chooses. Yep, well, that's what Suji does at least. He's going over here for this property, going for the chain, go for the comm tower early rather than getting that easy property in front of him. I'm assuming Izanagi would probably do the same thing. Even though he is grit, so he's gonna play a little more passive, I still think he'd go for the early comm tower. Just knowing him, mm, nope. The passivity is already shown as grit, and he builds his first artillery, and he's gonna wanna blast that shit to smithereens. Uh, it's, it's an investment usually worth doing on this map. Uh, I find that typically you wanna blow up that pipe seam. Unlike scavenger, that's kind of like optional if you wanna blast it open or not. This one is kind of forced to blast it open, so typically you see people blast it open turn like six, seven, eight. So, so far, not too many de deviations except for this infantry over here, and you actually see him going up here first rather than the comp tower first. Makes sense, I agree. And you actually see Sujid also building this artillery first. I very, very, very ra rarely recommend building artillery into grid because all this artillery outrange you, it kind of makes them useless. But I can see the point of this artillery is literally probably to bust open that pipe seam and nothing else. So I, I, I won't advise against it in that situation because it is the fastest unit to break open that pipe seam. But it's probably going to be useless after that, so you're going to have to watch out for that. So, Did he base skip to get that artillery? Man, Sujit is nutty. Sujit is a nut. I don't agree with that. You can wait next turn. Like You're not getting anything fast out here that you wouldn't normally. I would build an infantry, cross the river, and then start capping this and start capping this stuff. He's got nothing over here, whereas this is not like he can easily just plop this infantry and start capping over there. First mistake by Sujid, uh, he loves the artillery too much. The pipe seam is not that big a deal, especially this early in the game. Grit's gonna be passive, you, I don't see any. If he wants to be aggr hyper aggressive and flood out here, build a recon, not an artillery. So a strange start for Mr. Sujid, uh, but Izanagi probably gonna play a lot more standard. But he brings his infantry up here rather than crossing the river. I don't see why you wouldn't just cross the river and start capping that. Maybe he doesn't realize that's there. This is not going to cap a thing for another two turns. It's going to go here, then here, actually three turns. So it just makes zero sense to do that, to be perfectly honest. Um, but whatever. Like I said, 007, Agent Weeaboo, 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, you can barely. So if you're Drake here, Drake or Sammy would pretty pretty overpowered. You can get the uh, infantry over here. Uh, so I definitely would pick them in tier two and four, respectively. Uh, an extra turn over there. Same goes with a land. Well, no, a lander still wouldn't reach. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. A lander would reach over here at least. So, so far, so good. It looks like Suji's getting hyper aggressive over here, uh, looking to reinforce. Builds a recon, so he is having the aggressive build. I would have built the recon first and then the artillery. I, I don't like the ordering that he did that. But this Nagi's basically focusing solely on that pipe seam right there with his artillery. No, he's not even using it yet. Okay, he's, he's opting to wait a little longer. He builds his second artillery, so the artillery proliferation has begun. Still, like, so out of position with that infantry. That didn't make any sense to me. Hopefully, Mr. Suji uh, finds this and moves his infantry over here and actually starts capping that. That would be a nice move, in my opinion. So it's not quite intuitive because you might think, oh, this is part of the sea tile. I can't do anything, but it's a river. You can move an infantry over here. You can move a mech over there. It's no big deal. He does find it. Faster than his Nagi, so he's going to have a slight advantage there, even though he base skipped. Built a second recon, so he's going heavy, re heavy Riki on this map. Um, I mean, that makes sense. There's a lot of shoals. Uh, there's not mountains in the middle, so recons kind of indicate that he's probably going to go strong in the middle. Put a lot of pressure there. Maybe over here, but you can use the mountain to see over here. Um, so I'm curious, maybe this artillery is planning to go to this forest over here and stop these two caps as soon as it busts open that pipe seam, if I were to guess. So, so far, Mr. Izzy. Gets his recon out, gets his, his his third artillery out. He's going, he's grit. He's not messing around, he's going heavy arty. He's going for the arty party, and look, Suji didn't even opt to go for this comp tower. I actually kind of like that a bit, because comp tower, he's not fighting yet. What's the point of getting a comp tower if you're not fighting this early? Go for the income. Get this, get this. Go for it, dude. Do you. I like that. Smart move by, uh, heads up move by Izzy, or uh, by Dijusk, or Suji, whatever you want to call him, Suji. Uh, so... Pretty, pretty heads up player. I, just, I hate that base skip, but other than that, I think uh, Suji has a better beginning so far. I mean, Izanagi is a bit in a pickle because he is building uh, artillery is great. It's a bit tricky to really uh, do anything else. He's got the recon, but he has no follow-up to it. So whatever the recon does, he's going to have to bring the artillery right behind it uh, to support it or else it's going to get blasted by who God knows what, a tank or something. So, so far, so good. Looks like Izanagi has less of a presence over here than Suji does. You can look over here. Suji does have more income advantage. He has capped these cities earlier. None of them are really in the middle yet. I think by virtue of... What did Isnagi do different? He capped this property rather than going for the comp tower one turn earlier. And because of that, had a little delayed in the caps over there. So I like Suji's opening a bit better uh, in terms of income and just putting the pressure on early. Really getting those properties, forcing Isnagi to go attack him to get them first. Rather than just allowing it. Builds an anti -air already. You know... I usually would advise for this. It's day eight. Eight to ten is a good time, but he's grit. I wouldn't expect to see many copters for a while. I would probably have opted for just for a tank right here. Um, or maybe an infantry and then build a lander next turn or something of the sort. I don't think you need an artillery or an anti this early to verse grit. You kind of have to adjust. If you're playing versus like Jess, Drake, grit, those are the types of COs. Maybe Jess not as much because it's a slight air uh, deterrence but uh, or weaker air units, but Typically with weaker air units, you're going to see less battle copters, so I think you would have adjusted a little bit here. I don't expect to see much grit copters. I, I might be proven wrong, but I doubt it. So grit puts his recon in the center, putting a little pressure early. Has no coverage of it though, there's, an there's artillery over here. He sees his infantry and he's shifting all his units down here. So he's not even playing around, he's like, you know what, this will be my weak side, this will be my strong side. I'm not even waiting for a lander, I'm going to make this my strong side first by using this little shoal over here to transport. So he's just making this... His, uh, his strong side early obviously does not, well not obviously, but he does not build a copter. He builds a second anti-air, which I kind of like actually as grit, because you're going to expect early copters, because you, they, everyone knows, oh he's going to build artillery, so if I build recons and tanks, it'll go boom boom. So it makes sense to go for the artillery, it's kind of like a um, anticipating the copters, anticipating the counterattack, anticipating the counterattack, you know what I mean? Like, one step ahead of the enemy, so I like this build by Izanagi so far. Really makes sense. Capping all these properties, he's going to have a huge income advantage. He's going to have, well, he's not going to get that. He sees this. I would probably attack that. It's on a road. It probably would die yet not knowing. We see all the units here, but you typically would assume there's probably an infantry here. I would still attack that just to kind of slow down the capture phase of Izanagi because that's great. It's going to be harder to get it later. He does attack. 3-9 is a great roll. Sees the recon in the middle. Moves his own recon up. 
It's got a great capture boost, not, not gonna lie. Builds his first copter, his Nagi is well prepared for any copters. And you only want have one airport over here. You have a shit ton of docks, but you only have one airport kind of in the corner, so you're not gonna see quite as many area units as usual because it's kind of off on the side. A lot of recent modern maps, you have typically have airports kind of forward, which makes them a bit more viable, but you don't really see that on this map so far. That's gonna get Burgroom, bud. I would not have done that. Like, I guess he didn't see any units there and he got trapped, but still, I, I don't like that. So he got Burgroom, bud for no reason. I probably would have like brought it back or just kept it where it was. Uh, so he's gonna lose that cap. He's gonna lose that income advantage he worked so hard for. Well, it didn't work that hard, but he's gonna have a huge income advantage for at least one turn though. So far, so good. We got equal comm towers, but look at that chain. Boom. 23,000 to 17,000. I mean, soon it's going to be 18 to 22, but that's still pretty significant. So, I he's getting vision over there, but you got to be wary of this. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're playing with your life, boy. You don't even realize this. He, Suji over here is like, all right, this is going to be my strong side early. He doesn't know that it's not his strong side. He sees the recon. He's like, okay. And he, see, he got hit by an artillery. He's like, okay, maybe... Maybe it's just a little bit of a strong side. Maybe just a little bit of a strong side. But he has no idea that Izanagi is funneling all his units over here. Sans one artillery up there at the top. So he's going to be in for a weird awakening. And he actually recklessly throws that away. He sees no artillery, but he's going to be in a shallow grave soon enough. I, I don't like throwing away your recon like that. I would put it in this forest over here and keep seeing intelligence and whatnot. Because um, it will live an artillery shot if it's in the forest rather than the plane. But it will die in a plane like a dog. So that's a dead recon for sure. So Izanagi should be liking his start so far. Even though he had a, kind of a bad capture phase, he's still reclaiming those properties. He's gonna murder this infantry with the anti-air, probably followed by recon and capture, then put an artillery either in front of it or next to it, ensuring he gets the cap. It'll be too e it'll be super easy to get. He can easily even move this one, two, three, four, five, but he actually opts to keep it over here just to prevent that. Man, look at that range. It is crazy these artillery's range, right? Like, oh my god. Wait, wait, that seems a little high. Why is the range that high? Oh, that's his vision. Wait, what? One, one, two. This should, it should stop at this. Why does it go even further? Okay, that's a little bit of a glitch. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's a little weird. It's not that good of a range. That'd be nutty. Uh, okay. Throwing a little bit of his unit Suji over here. Oh, Suji, what are you doing? You gotta be careful. Okay. So... He saw the mountains and he saw this over here and he opted to go for it. Luckily, there is only two anti or, uh, artillery, so he can do it. He can well not hit KO because he's Hawk, baby. I think that might be a roll. I mean, it's, it's full HP tank on a road attacking an infantry. I think it might have been a roll, but he's ballsy as hell. And he goes, Grungla, going in for the one hit. Copter coming in, or the recon coming into a nice little sweet spot over there revealing and he actually overflows Which is kind of cool. I like that. I mean this this artillery is gonna be useless Otherwise, so you might as well overflow and threaten another artillery. So I like this move by Suji so far going for the overflow Building the triple tank towards red build So far so good uh, Looks like Suji slightly ahead on the capping over here um, But pretty dead even so far Bed tank though, look at that one shot. Boom! Five, six K doing seven K of damage right there. That's why you kind of have to be wary. And then you see all the shit coming and you can't do anything about it. Like you just can't fight into that bullshit. You just can't fight in that. Luckily he has no tanks. If I'm as an Augie, I probably would have built a tank. I mean, tanks aren't great as grit, but you still need to throw some tanks in there. They're 80% firepower, 90% with the calm tower, but they're still the bread and butter of your building army. All right, you still need some, but he's got infantry wall, so it's not that huge of a deal. He just, more artillery, he uses this coming in. I mean, Sax is anti-air over here. Uh, luckily for him, he has a backup, but that one's gonna die probably. You can get a hit off over here and here, and this copter will be able to do something for a turn or two, but let's see what Suji can pull up right here. He's, he's, he's still starting to lose some units over here. If we look at the stats real quick, oops a doodles. He has lost four units to one unit. And he's lost two infantry, recon, and a tank, and all he has killed is one single infantry. Granted, he has weakened off this artillery, but the unit count is definitely in his Nagi's advantage. He actually swings down south, which is kind of interesting. Not a bad move, per se. I don't know about sacking that, though. This is obviously going to die to that artillery over there in the forest. Ooh, Grunga gets a nice roll right there. Or maybe it was not a roll with Hawk, because Hawk, he's got a big... 
if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> that is, this is, just doesn't make any sense, dude. You're gonna get blasted to smithereens, that makes no sense. So that is a dumb move. Get a little, get a little too cocky. But he's going all out over here, he's going the triple tank, he's going artillery and, er, artil anti-air and two tanks now. So he's, he's opting, this is his strong side. It's not gonna be over on the other hand, he's putting some infantry over on the offensive over here. Like, I wouldn't be too offensive. All you have is one anti or er, artillery and support. I don't know, you have to kind of go slow here. I mean, Hawk's infantry are stronger first off. Uh, there might be recons on the prowl. So you better watch out about that kind of stuff. But he's feeling feisty. He gets trapped. Here comes the first power of the game. A snap attack. Ba -do 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 yeah, so that's dead. That's dead. Uh, yeah, a lot of things are done. Bagoonga. 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 Just like that. Bagoonga. Poor Suji it was looking so fine for him for a bit that he just got Bagoomba. Not Boomba, Bagoomba. I don't know what the difference is, but that's what happened. And now uh, that you can't even fight into that. You just kind of have to retreat. You kind of have to take the losses. Like it's like going to like a bar and someone slaps you. They're like, "What are you gonna do?" And you're like, "Go home." And then just walk home. Like you can't fight back. They'll beat the shit out of you. Like you're like, okay, I guess I'll go home then. Sorry. Like, it sucks, like, when you lose a battle and you have to retreat, too, it's like the worst feeling ever. Typically, you're like, oh, I gotta beat him up, this'll teach him from messing with me. No, you, you got slapped around, you just gotta fall back, man. Look at all these artillery, too! One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Jesus Christ. That is a lot. And he's even healing with this little backbow, that's cute, but I probably would've used it to transport infantry. Suji is not backing off. Okay. Okay. Oh, he's attacking at the top now. The beeplers. Attacking in there. Has his copter. <laughs> okay. You gotta be careful about that bullshit. Alright, and yeah, that's 100% that's dead. He goes for the recon kill. Dude. I can tell this guy hasn't played grit before. Played against grit before, because this is very reckless. You do not want to be pulling this bullshit. This is great. You have the income advantage. Consolidate the properties that you have, lock down that property so Grit can't get it. But you don't just fight blindly into Grit or you're gonna get bamboozled, you're gonna get bab baboondled. But he's fighting in, he's gonna lose a shit ton of units. But luckily for him, he does have a Black Wave coming, so that's the one positive thing coming back. He has triple tanks. Soon he can start, if he gets a few more properties, he can start building triple tanks and a copter, or double tank and a copter, so... Actually can already build two tanks and a copter and an infantry, he can already still build that, it's 24k, so... But look at that. Look at those tanks. Boom, boom. Just like that. <laughs> a little slight in lead in the unit value. Boom, boom, no. Boom, boom, no. No. Boom, boom, boom. And this Nagi's wiping the floor with Suji. It's not looking good for Suji. It's only day 14. But uh, let's look at the stats. It's not gonna be pretty. 18 to 10. And of those eight, there, eight of those 10 deaths are eight are infantry. Whereas only nine of the 18, which is half, rather than 80% of his deaths, he's got three tanks, two copters, one anti-air, three recons. So AKA 70,000 worth of damage uh, versus Nagi's only done like less than half of that. So, Nagi's sitting pretty. He should be happy how this is going. He builds it. You know he's feeling good about himself when he was a black bug. He's like, who's this dingbat? I'm gonna black bud. I'm so far ahead. Look at this. I got 10 more units. I got a little bit behind on the income, but I'm better at the unit value. I got more income. This would be easy. I'm his Nagi 007. I'm gonna take on Goldfinger or whatever. It'll be easy. Suji has other ideas. He didn't use his power though. I would have used the power and then killed that, but um, okay. He's holding on to the power for now, it seems. Maybe he's at the end of the turn. He's not using it yet. You know, curious. Usually when you have a gl global damage power, I pop it straight away. It's not like Andy or stuff like that where you're like, oh, I want to use it at the proper time. I mean, you can actually hold on to it too if you get some wall breaks. Actually, you know, I can't fault him. I am the type to pop Hawk power soon because if you get a lot of damage done, you're not getting any charge and the charge is really good for you. You're not getting any charge for that death. Um, but luckily he's not killing anything, so he's not really missing out on charge, so it's not a big deal. So what is Suji playing? He's got the income advantage. Looks like he saved up a bit of Mun Mun right there. He's gonna have around 30k. So what is Suji planning? He's so far behind in units. 
Like, what is his plan here? HQ rush? No, he's not. He's, he's all out down here, basically. Well, he's got half and half. He's dabbling a bit. I don't know about this dabbling. Suji is dabbling. He's, that's how you know it's not me. I don't dabble. I'm not a dabbler. I'm a stabbler for life, baby. Stabbing for life. Ding, ding. All right, so he goes in, kills the infantry. He's going in actually over here. Is he going to use the power or superpower? Or is he going to wait till he's damaged and then use it? Probably going to the latter. Man. He needs more recons. He's only got one recon over here. He doesn't see this over here. He doesn't see this over here. He doesn't, he doesn't know anything. He needs more recons. Vision denial is real. Or something in the mountain. Well, he had something in the mountain. So we saw those things at least. But in the center, you need a recon in the center ASAP. Uh, it's not going to be in the middle for another two turns. So <sighs> he's going to lose some more units. Suji, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to be the disciple of Deejus, you got to play well, man. So far, I'm not liking what I've seen. Uh, the beginning was kind of nice. But other than that, another snipe attack, and you're getting no charge for that. Double the freaking damage, units and value. Down. Down, da, 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 down, da, da. This game is like almost over. This is just a brutal. This is a brutal thing. If there's no Black Storm, you might consider resigning here as Hawk. Like this is, this is just a beatdown. This is a huge beatdown. <laughs> yeah, Suji so got punched in the face of the bar, and he's like, "Guess I'll walk home." <laughs> Saving up money for something or other. It's not just wiping the floor with this dude. This is brutal. Why is Deed showing this game? Why is Deed showing this game? He's beating the shit out of this guy. It's not a 1350 level player. So Deed's like a 1200 player at his best. Why is he showing this game? He's getting the, the ass cheeks beaten out of him. He's blocking this over there. He has to attack from here and then he's going to get gangbanged by two artillery. Why is what is DG doing? What 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 could possibly go on? How do you blunder a position like this? I don't know. Black Storm. So he's behind. Well, let's let's, let's look at the thing first. He's behind 50,000, 12 units. He's barely ahead. One cap, but he's already threatening two. And if you attack any of these caps, you're gonna get bl blasted to smithereens. So he uses a Black Storm. He's gonna heal a little bit. Just a little bit. Do you see how little that did? How much did that heal? 900. It healed 200 damage. But he did a shit ton of damage though, look at that. Healed 200, but he did 40,000. Bagroom! He's attacking this black boat for god knows what reason. But yeah, that's gonna kill. That's gonna kill. He's gonna get some KOs probably. Ooh, not quite there. But he's getting some hits in there. With some random ass units. He's just going all in. He doesn't give a shit. But are they all going to die to an Izanagi attack though? Copter comes in. There is a Copter to attack back, but it's got 8 HP and it's weaker. So it's not really a threat. Boom, the tank comes in. He's getting a few good hits off. I'm not going to lie. But Izanagi's going to have a bunch of firing back. Like, that tank is dead. That tank is dead. A few of these units are going to be dead. That tank is... These two tanks are dead. This tank is dead. But he did weaken up Izanagi's army, softened him up with the 8 HP. Uh, all his units are 8 HP now. Bye bye, Copter. Actually, that could reach. That surprised me there. A snap attack again. Good idea using it during the power so Hawk won't get any charge. So that's a Boomba dead. Boomba weakened. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, good. He's got tanks now. He needs tank support. Izanagi definitely does. And this is looking. This is looking bad. This is looking bad for Suji. He's behind in everything again. Except for income. He's got income. That's all he got. But he built a battleship. I didn't even notice this last turn. I didn't even comment on this. But he built a battleship. Versus Grit. Which is really... Bad. Old ship. It's a bad old ship. That's what it is. It's a bad old ship. So let's see what it does. I don't like when people build battleships. Maybe as Grit. Maybe as Grit you build a battleship. But like, why? <laughs> 
god, you got a mouse, what you gonna do? Attack that one thing or kill off that? Oh my god. Oh, he's got no army, he's so screwed. He is so screwed. He is so screwed. Okay, good. He kills off the copter. Kills off the black boat, of all things. I mean, the tank can kill the artillery, I guess. Boonga, or er, recon, weaken at least. But, why are you fighting it? You saw this unit! Why are you bringing your tank over here, dude? Kill off this or some shit. Why? Attack from the here and kill it off. It's making some questionable attacking decisions. Along with the battleship, which made zero sense. I mean, if you do attack this, I guess you have follow-up attacks potentially coming. It's not like he's going to lose the side if he doesn't play it carefully. He should probably retreat over here. I don't know if this battleship's going to do that. Probably he's going to sit there the majority of the game. Uh, but it's not like he's got a lot more power at the bottom. He probably needs to press this at the bottom, but he's red, so it's a bit harder to press your advantage than as another CO. Easy copter hill. hill. Boomba, boom, boom, balloonga. So he gets a bit of a counterattack, but this is still looking pretty decent for uh, whatever his name is, Deegis or whatever, the, you know, imposter. So luckily for him, the battleship actually will be able to hit this entire of all things. So he's act it's going to get a little bit more value than it probably should. And it's Nagi is threatening the cap over here. All he needs is 4 HP, so that copter most likely is going to attack that infantry. He's not going to want to give up that precious uh, comp tower. Boonga. Whoa, that's a one shot? That's Hawk Bower. That's the Bower Hawk, baby. Boom. That's a one shot, too. Damn, Hawk. You strong, boy. You strong, boy. Boom. 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 Yeah, and then probably attack this with the recon and just call it a day. Don't. That's dead, so you might as well just leave it. Don't fight into all this stuff over here. We're already at day 19, by the way. This game is flying by. There's so much going on. So, kills off that with the recon. Good, builds more recons. He needed more recons. His, his vision earlier was shit. He needs he needs to get this mountain over here or get a recon over there. He's got no vision whatsoever. It's not he doesn't really have any infantry to really capitalize over there. He's He tried to get this property. He hasn't grabbed this property for some reason. He's, I mean, it's been wide open. He's had artillery covering it for so long. It would be not in Suji's interest to even attack over here. So, I, I'm surprised he hasn't captured that one property so far. A little strange. Uh, but, you know, if I'm great, I'd be happy down with just 2k in income advantage, so it's not a huge deal, but still, like, he'd probably do a little bit better there. So if I'm great, I'm probably gonna back up with my units over here a bit. I mean, no, he's not backing up. He's, uh, strengthening up. Okay. I think... No, oh, he doesn't have mountain vision, so he doesn't see what's all going on. He sees this part of the vision, so he sees all this, but he doesn't know about the shift over there. So, what will Suji do? He goes for the comp talk. He goes for the cap over there as well. I don't think he's going to get both of them. Maybe one of them if he's lucky. Goes the moves the battleship up, so the battleship doesn't even hit the HQ. I mean, if it hit the HQ, maybe it has some viability. You can kill the uh, the back boat on the battleship. But yeah, the back boat along my HQ and then start capping it. But he's going for these two caps. He has nothing to defend this. So if the tank attacks this, oh, tank can't even reach. He's going to get this. Dude, he's going to get the comp tower. Good for Suji. 30% firepower. I don't see how you stop that. He builds a bomber. Um, I, well, I don't know how to... I don't know. It's tricky for Squid because you want to build a Neo tank, but it dies to two artillery. So you might as well build a bomber, I guess. It's tricky. I, I It'll tack up as much for Squid. I'd go triple tank and then a copter if I could. I could just build smaller units the whole damn game. Because smaller units are your bread and butter if you're going to face off for a script. You don't want to be building tech up units like neo tanks, medium tanks, battleships, bombers. Uh, you want to just have your smaller units just plow through, ideally. So it looks like Gria is going to lose that comp tower. Just for one turn, it seems. He's probably going to be able to kill off that infantry next turn and easily recap it. But, ooh, Bagrungla. He's got no anti-air. Well, he's got this one. He's going to shift down for sure. That would be suicide if he didn't. Because he's got two copters over there, so it looks like Deegis or Suji will get the comp tower for one single turn. Bagunga. See if he makes any use of that. First copter attacks. Well, it's gonna die. Yep, there goes that one, and uh, one of them's gonna die at least to the uh, anti air. Maybe not die actually, because it's 80% attack. He lost the comp tower, so maybe it actually will live. See if that battleship will get any more usage. I mean. If he, recap if he captures that, he will be able to lock it down, but I don't know if he's going to be able to capture that from Grid in the first place. And don't look now, Suji's sl slinking back in into the uh, stats department. He's behind 10 units in terms of death to kills, but, you know, 
not not too bad, I guess. Uh, he's he's taking a lot more damage than kills, but you know he's all right. Uh, he's got the income advantage the entire time. He's down seven units. He's he's ahead in unit value, um, so it's not the end of the world for him. A lot of the uh, Izanagi's units are still weakened, and they're going to be more weakened by another black wave or a black storm. So it's not he's not down and out. He's he was looking really bad earlier. I thought he was going to lose for sure. Uh, just immediately, but apparently he had a little bit of a counterattack. I think he's not kind of overextended. Had his all his units you know, like scattered around, like one artillery here and here and here and here and here, like not bunched together like this. This is a lot more formidable attack. There's infantry walls, um, like this for example. What the fuck? One, two, three. Like they're all like do 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 do. Like cover each other. Like this is good. Do 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 do. You attack from there. And you attack from that, like, if, if assuming these aren't here, you want more area closer to each other. That was the worst phrasing ever. You want it, yeah, if your unit's closer. You want more area not between them. Uh, so he kind of blundered that a bit. But now, it's not, ooh, I, I skipped through that. So it's Nagi's turn now. Bagunga kills off one copter. He's going to easily recap that in one turn, unless there's a black wave or something of the sort. Or a black storm to uh, stop that cap, but it's going to be inevitable uh, otherwise. And now Suji, he's a bit of a dabbling fellow over here. Look how many units he's got. He's got so it's not like he's got ten artillery, three tanks, three recons, and a bunch of other skip. It's not like he's only got six tanks, four recons, one bomb. He's got too many teched up units. He needs more tanks. He doesn't have enough tanks. He's got one, two tanks over here. There's all these artillery. He's got one tank over here and a couple recons in the back. For all these, like he's just got he's so many less units, so he's gonna. I don't know what Suji is gonna do. He's gonna hope to hope for the tech up. That's a shot, a one shot, I should say. That should be a one shot too. Ooh, not quite. Is he gonna use the Black Storm to stop the cap? It's a bit of a desperation move, but he might do it if he really wants to keep that cap. Ooh, no, nah, he's gonna allow it. I, I wouldn't expect him to use a Black Storm here. He's gonna save it up. Yeah, did he build another black? Did he build that, or is that just healing? No, that's just healing. So he's saving up a lot of money again. What's he got in mind? Is he gonna build another battleship? I surely hope not. His Nagi gets his comm tower back. He got his mojo back. Dead recon, free con I would call it. That was a free con. When you just offer it up like that, that's a free con right there. Beep boop, dead. That's free con. I'm gonna start saying that in every single video ten times. Free con, free con. Everyone loves free cons. So it's like a Mang's infantry. The version of a Mang's infantry for a recon is called a free con. Ah, I'm TMing that bullshit. Anyway, his Nagi's winning on all fronts. He's as long as he can get too ballsy and fight into this battleship, he'll be fine. Black Storm comes in though, keeping Suji in this. Boom, bada boom, bada boom. He barely heals anything at all. Heals 200 again. He literally healed his infantry. That's all it did. Wow. But... There's about 40,000 that damages though. So, it's not useless. Beep beepers. The beepers are getting in. Jeepers creepers look at those beepers. So, Bomber goes in. Blatantly just goes for the battleship... Or the black boat kill. See, fully seeing that there is a anti right there. Doesn't really seem to give a shit. All right, Suji, I see you have balls of steel. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but like, attacking on all fronts at once, clearly not a very big disciple of Deejus, because you would know you attack on one front, pull back on the other, attack on the front. You don't punch with both hands, you punch, boom, boom. Like, you know, you don't, boom, boom. Because then you just, boom, and then they punch you in the face and you're dead. But you don't die, well, hopefully not. Maybe if you punch like this, you would get killed one punch, though. So. <laughs> so. He's uh, not really following that, so he's gonna probably get brutalized. He's ahead 80,000, but he's just so many counterattacks, he's gonna lose so many units. And he didn't really build anything teched up, he just built uh, three tanks and a copter, which is honestly better. Build the smaller, quicker units rather than the big, uh, beefy boy units. He's using snipe attack. Now, using his superpower, not super snap, but using snipe attack, which I approve of. Boongla, boongla, boom, boom, boom. Murdering everything on the bottom right there. Literally everything has just died on the bottom. There's a black, two black boats is basically all that remain. These are up for the taking. Luckily for him, Iznagi's units are all weakened. He's got 1 HP, 2 HP, 8 HP, 1 HP. Like, he's got no ability to, like, take full advantage of just slaughtering all the units down there. So luckily for 
Suji he's surviving. Thrive and surviving. Bit of a conniving. So, but booking that bomber. Not gonna even get any charge for that too, because he attacked during superpower. That's just the worst. Copter attacking that copter. I guess that's a trade. Not really favorable, but he's doing it. He's not getting any charge to Suji though, so that's probably why he's doing it. But he actually, at the end of the turn, he does have less unit value. I mean, granted, half of freaking Suji's army is put in this battleship right here. So, but Suji, boom! He just needs to kill off that other anti-air with this tank, and then he, his stuff can run free. He probably will do that, to be honest. Boom! Blah. Yeah, right from the city. And he's, he's surviving. Eee, super Snipe's gonna kill you. But he might not get a Super Snipe. It depends on how much power he gets. So Suji's hanging in there. He's ahead in the unit value. He's ahead in the income, like, the entire game. But he's still kind of looking a little shaky. But this HQ is looking threatening. And this one's looking a little threatening. Like, look, Suji's ready to cap that shit. He's ready to cap. This is looking like Suji's last hope is that HQ. And his dog is... He's licking his lips. Like, he's looking like that. Weeaboo, Iznagi's looking at that like he's looking at an anime body pillow. Oh, goodness. He's going in for the kill. So, Iznagi kills off. He has no anti over here, so this bomber's actually going to be able to do some more damage before it can actually die, which is actually kind of sweet. So that bomber's actually getting a little bit of uh, work done. Even though I wouldn't recommend teching up like that, it's actually working semi-decently for him so far. Um, Iznagi has his cheeky infantry just to get some intel over here. See what's being moved around and stuff. Suji surviving, thriving, conniving. Boom kills off the copter, which will in turn die. He should heal all his units, heal that, yeah, kill that, and then maybe bring it to three. Heal it, there you go. Wait for the power, Pagunga. Kill off the tank. Now it looks like he's front shifting to the bottom a bit. Yeah, he's bringing the bomber back, he's front shifting completely to the bottom, smart move. He should have front shifted so many times earlier in the game. The thing about Versus Grit, his units are very immobile. He's got freaking artillery, which take five movement, rather than the tanks that have six or recons with eight. Sometimes he has rockets, sometimes he has even slower units. Front shifting Versus Grit is your bread and butter if you're facing against him, because he's not going to be able to match you with the front shift. He's going to have to be like slog slower every time. Oh, Grit. He wants to entrench. He wants to stay on the front and keep fighting and fighting and fighting. He wants to entrench himself here. Keep fighting and fighting and fighting. He can't really push forward that much. He can't really like shift all his units to the middle that easily. He needs to entrench himself. He likes World War II style. Everyone else wants to fight World War or World War One style. Everyone else wants to fight World War II style. You don't want to be fighting trench warfare, artillery warfare. You want to be freaking jumping over shit and blowing things to smithereens. I don't even know if that's how World War II was, but that's how I imagine in my head. So that's how it is. And he finally gets this property that probably should have had ten turns ago. So now he's only behind 1k in income. So basically, equal in income. 1k on this map is very insignificant, so they're basically equal at this point, unfortunately, for Mr. Izanugi. I mean, uh, Suji. Gets his anti-air in position, he actually gets a super snap, so these tanks are all gonna die. And not all of them, but like... Boomba dead. This is gonna be an ugly turn. Dead. Ooh, they live somehow. That died. He got healed up. It's like, you're gonna make it, buddy. Overkill. Boom. No chance. You're not going home. To f no Best Buy gift card for you. No holiday in gift card for you. Not even a Panera gift card or Subway gift card. No gift card, buddy. His Nagi is slapping the shit out of Suji right now. Suji, what are you gonna do, bud? What are you gonna do? You have to have a fighting chance here. You got Hawk, you got the better seal. What are you gonna do about it, dude? You can't just go to the home from the bar, you gotta fight back. He's retreating. He's building all infantry, he's saving up money again. Oh no. This is, every time he protects up, it's been bad. Like this battleship was a blunder. It's probably killed like 4,000 in unit value. Maybe 5,000 or some shit, like. Should have had more tanks. Look at this income, or unit value, or unit advantage. He's got so many more. So he had eight tanks to 10 artillery. Like, artillery are gonna win every day of the week. Now Suji seems to be front shifting as Nagi's going a little dabbling. He's putting half his units up here and he's putting half them down here, so maybe they could play into Suji's liking. That is Nagi starting to be the dabbler. The dabbled has become the dabbler. So, will he be stabbled in response? We'll see. What's Suji's plan? He attacks in the copter. Boom, boom, boom. 
And, okay, good defense over here, but it's still gonna die. He's healing his bomber. The bomber is like, I've had enough of this bullshit. He's, he's going back to heal. He's not even going to the black red. He's like, fuck that. I'm going straight to the cop. Runway, like, get ready. Here I come, baby. And he's gonna heal up there. I mean, hey, it's gonna heal with the black storm. Might as well heal it, I guess. I don't know. I have not done that ever in my life. Heal the bomber after it left the airport. Freaking Numi did that, though. I think you guys remember at the end of the Numi game, he freaking healed his full HP bomb. It wasn't even damaged. It even it had high fuel, and he still put it back on his airport. That was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I, I laugh my ass off. I love Numi, though. I love Numi. He's a special. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. What the literal flop. What the literal flop, dude. Why? That one worked so badly. And now you're building another one? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so bizarre. Well, this is... He's getting pretty aggressive, is now he's let's see if he overextends here. He's getting pretty hyper aggressive. Kills that off, kills the infantry. Okay. Oh my god, there's five, six dead, 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 dead. All of them are dead. All of them are dead. There's no exception, they're all dead. And the copter's dead. Well, no the copter will live. There's no anti-air. That's a saving grace. He's got three copters and there's no anti-air. So he has a chance. He's near a black storm, so it's not completely doomed. So it's not getting misplayed. He has both the anti-air up here for some reason. That's the power of stabling or the lack of power from sta or of dabbling. He's got two up here. Imagine if they're down here versus the three amigos, the three copters, the three musketeers. What the hell are these guys? They're like, where's the bomber? And he's like, I'm over here, buddy. I'm all the way over here healing up. Just healing up there, buddy. So, very interesting. These copters are gonna feast. These copters are gonna feast. And the bomber's like, you know, I just need to, uh, the top off. I don't need to be fully here. I'm, I'm coming out, buddy. So his Anagi, he's gonna have some powerful counterattack. All the tanks are literally gonna die. Dead. And uh, I'm gonna, oh, he sees the battleship, but he's still bringing the units into it for some reason. Curious, I guess he doesn't give a shit. At this point, he's over it. Dead tank, dead tank, dead tank. Dead tank. Those are pretty much dead in my book. Although they'll be 3 HP after he uses the Blackstorm, so actually they're not quite dead, so. Those are a bit significant, I suppose. And he starts capping that. Oh, the hubris. The hubris. Look at all these. He's got freaking seven ant or artillery over here, two copters. But look, vulnerable. This tank can kill that. This tank can not do anything. I don't know. There's, there's going to be a strong counterattack. The Black Wave is going to hurt. The black wave is gonna hurt. Is he gonna use it though? Now, or black storm, excuse me. Bagroong. Okay, did more than usual. So, uh, you know, I did a full 10k, not bad. Okay, he healed his units. Well, the bomber is probably the majority of all that healing right there. And the little tanky boost too. And then a lot of damage done. Now these are all 8 HP ready to get plowed through. Boom. Boom. So now, here's the counterattack he needed so bad. What the literal hell are you doing, dude? Don't do that. That makes no sense. Don't do that. Copter goes in. Boom. 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 Is that... No, the bomber can't quite reach. Okay, that's the extent of his attack. But he's got... He didn't get a vision. That's why you need a Riki. That's why you need a freaky Riki, dude. Imagine if he, all three of these like were not in the range of this. They would just get free hits over here. All right, Pizzle. And then we see the first stealth. So... First Grit, stealths are very tempting to get. I mean, he's got more advantage because Grit has to build a fighter in response, but typically on a lower income map, they're a bit stronger. This kind of map, he can build a fighter and three infantry every single turn and no problem. I mean, he has to have some repairs and stuff maybe, but you know, it's pretty easy to counter. So we'll see how that works out for him. So that's a, yeah, dead. And dead tank too, most likely. Yep, Bing. No, lives with another one HP. It's a feisty little tank over there. Now Izanagi's threatening to take all these caps over here. Izanagi's threatening all over the board. Stay 30, my, my god, this game is never ending. Copter comes in, anti-air comes in. The dabbling has begun. Look at all of these anti-air. He's ready for a copter spam. 
He overreacted so hard to those three copters. He's like, man, he's like, oh, copter belt for Yeti and run. Like, no, don't do that. Battleship moves forward one space. All I can do. Wow, look at that range. What a beaut. What a beaut. Here comes the first stealth, and he's got an APC. Is he going to save it for another stealth, too? He's not really buying big boy stuff. Bomber comes in. Oh, you poor little soul. You're dead. Copter kills. What's he going to do, though? He's... Su Suji is somehow staying in this. I mean, it's crazy. I feel like he's so far there behind, but then there you look at this, and you're like, oh, 60,000 of that is actually in battleships. 56,000. And then the stealth fighter. And then he's going to lose some copters. So, boom, 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 and look at all those anti-air. It's nuts how many anti-air. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven anti-air. Holy shit. And how many copters do you have? Two and one bomber. It's gonna be funny when the stealth actually like fights and you can't even do anything to it. The stealth is already hidden. It's going in. The Blackwood's healing itself for some strange reason. Here comes the stealth though. It's gonna be a little, a little bit of a treat. The thing is... Oh, he's building a mech now. Interesting. He's got no fighter, so that stealth will be able to do whatever it wants, basically. If I'm grit, you might anticipate seeing a stealth, though. You're like, where's all the strong units? Kind of can anticipate a stealth. I would build a fighter if I were grit at this point. Just, like, anticipation. Hey, can attack a bomber. can attack uh, copters otherwise. Like, it's not a big deal. And he's not building that many copters himself, so you wouldn't expect that many anti-air. And look, if you have built a fighter, purple has no anti-air at all, so how do you even kill that fighter? You're not going to attack a stealth into a fighter, most likely. So if I'm great, I build a fighter this turn. And he built a fighter this turn. Ding, 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 ding. Good job, Izanagi. You've moved far from where you began. What's he? Uh, I need to go there. Good move, though. <laughs> uh, this is really aggressive, though. That's that's going to get game bang. Boom, bada, boom, bada. And, uh... It's not, he's not really capitalizing. He did all this damage here. He didn't really get anything captured. He did all this damage here. He didn't really get anything captured. So, Suji has held the income advantage the entirety of the game. Somehow or another. But it looks like Suji... Ah, uh, it's looking like it's going to be another stealth. I'm not going to lie. Is he going to build a stealth army? I think he might. Nope. No stealth army. Why did he build an artillery here? Is this to go right here and protect the HQ? I think he's afraid for his HQ, maybe. I don't really know Suji's thought process right now. But, so the fighter comes in. Izanagi's looking pretty strong over there. He's trying to cap this, but it's going to be impossible with that battleship there. Izanagi's being wary. He's like, I don't really want to fight too hard into that. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Blackboat comes in for, for scouting one vision. Just to see that infantry and get a hit off, I guess. But now that's dead for sure. That is going to get gang banged. Boom. 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 Dead. Three Stooges killed him off. Recon in the middle, beautiful. Look at all those vision, perfect. You get the mountain and you get recon over here. You just need a recon over here. This recon trolley should move to this forest right here if I were him. Ooh, I, I wouldn't attack with that second. What are you doing, dude? Why? Oh God, is he gonna attack with a stealth now? <gasps> Ooh. You want to be wary of that. You want to be wary of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he attacks from there. Ouchie. Ouchie wouchies. He's being very cautious with the stealth though. Very cautious. Very cautious. And he's healing up the- wait. The bomber went back home, baby. The bomber went back home. That bomber ain't giving up. But now is Nagi look. The in we're in equal units? How is that possible? It must be all the air units. I think that's the difference, is the air units. Because Izanagi should be so much farther ahead. Let's look at the stats real quick. He's killed 12 more units. But I guess he's built so many more air units that it's like, that's why. So that's crazy to me. But Izanagi's just killing it in the unit count and, and damage done. Like, 40 units? Like, it's great that's the dream. What, how can Suji come back from that? He needs like a HQ cap at this point. He can heal up his bomber all he wants and he builds a second stealth. The stealth army has begun. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a huge stealth lover. He's putting the stealth in this strange space right here, I guess, just to get intel. He might get hit though. Because you can't even see the 
That's really risky. Unsupported stealth, nothing blocking around it. That's really dependent on what, what's going on. So, we'll see. If he puts a unit next to it, it will be seen and it will be attacked. So he's, he's placing a lot of faith in that stealth. Will it be spotted? Doesn't look like it. Ooh, it's coming close though. If he puts anything on that city, he will see it. Ooh, he lives another day. Whew, that stealth. I swear to God. I swear to God. Now, is he gonna build a third stealth? Is he gonna just get all stealthies? I mean, even if you're wealthy, don't build a stealthy. Now he brings it back down over here. Like, ah, that wasn't good enough. I don't really care. Heals it with the black boat. That's another advantage of the black boat. You can heal up your stealthies. Uh, top them with their gas off. But we're getting the proliferation of units now. We got 39 to 43. And look at that amount of income. I mean, amount of unit value. A black storm is going to decimate grits in the mountain. But let's again, all that shit is in battleships. And Iznagi can't push over here because of the battleship. And he can't push over here because of the battleship. So we're going to see a prol proliferation. The question is, who wins the long game here? Is it Hawk and his powers or is it Grit and his bullshit artillery? And their powers. Honestly, well, we'll find out. We'll find out. The stealthies are coming in though, and he's, he's got an answer. He's built his first rocket over here. The rocket can go over here. It's gonna take a long time. I don't know how much I agree with that rocket. I think he's just getting a little feisty. I mean, he could build a battleship here, to be honest, and really defend. He'd I mean, basically never be able to get through. Build a battleship, surround it with some units. You have a bat. Uh, isn't there a black boat around here as well? I already got killed earlier. You put a bat black boat here, defend it, you know, surrounded by units so you can't kill it. So we got two stealthies. Wealthy with the stealthies. Third stealth. I This is the first game I've seen three stealths in before. I have seen two stealths before. I've seen one stealth plenty of times. The first game I've ever seen three stealths in. So it looks like we're both, we're in trench warfare. We're in World War One style, which is what Grit wants. And he's pushing at the top of it. He's, he's, he's getting a little feisty. But he's, he's just moving his units around at the top. He gets a little vision. He has the mountain, which is a huge advantage. He has got a good vision. The recon's pretty decent advantage, but this is right in the middle. You can see the HQ. He's going to go for the kill. He's got a bomber preparing to kill that. So, and to him, he sees no stealth. That's the thing. He sees no stealth here. So he thinks this is just empty. And there's just an infantry, maybe a copter. And this bomber. He sees the bomber as well. So, is he in for a rude awakening? We shall see. What will he do? Battleship kills off a random infantry. No one gave a shat. No one gar gar Ah, uh, That's gonna die. He's throwing away his units too much, but he brings one stealth up. I, if I saw all of this, well, he doesn't see all of it, so he has no idea. So maybe he thinks that most of his army is up here when in reality it's all down here. Got a dabble alert over here and a dabble alert over here. Mostly stable over here, but you got a few. I don't know why I moved to up here. Like the battleship's gonna hold down. Bring all of your units down here and just plow through. Like that's your hope. And what? We see the first carrier in all of my replays. I don't think we've ever seen a carrier you built seriously on any of my replays ever. First carrier setting. Look at that range. And that's without a power. That is insane. He can reach his own HQ with one power and even further the super snipe. Oh my god. That is crazy. He can reach this bomber with the power. That is insane. But it's also a bad buy. Let's be honest here. It's a not a best buy gift card. It's a bad buy gift card right there. That's 30,000. Look at how much money he saved up. He's like, I don't even give a shit anymore. He builds a freaking carrier. The hubris on this man, the balls on this man, he doesn't even give a shit anymore. He's Nagi007. He's, he's living life to the fullest. He's building carriers. He's building carriers. I mean, he should feel pretty good about his position. He's winning for sure. But his, his position's more tenuous than he thinks, I think. Stealth's can overrun him. He's got battleships in position, so he can't be too reckless. Throwing away copters like no one's business, though. Not a fan of that. And then suddenly the stealth comes in and kills off a battle or a black boat. He's like, what? So that was kind of a shocker. And then all of a sudden, it's not like he's got a bit of a, a scare over here. He's got three artillery and some units, but there's a stealth and he's got nothing for that. His rocket, or his fighter's all the way over here. So maybe he's going to move his fighter over here, and then the two other stealths are going to fight down here. Oh, he's got four stealths! One, two, three, 
four cells for Sujid. What the literal? This is not a disciple of Deej. I do not build as many cells. I never would build as many cells. This guy is just nuts. We got two netty players. Four cells versus one carrier. What the literal flop? What the black flop, dude? Literally, I have no idea what's going on anymore. And he's fighting into this for some strange reason. I don't quite understand what's going on now. He's withdrawing. He's just going all in over here. I think he's front shifting over here. And, um, all right then. He sees this, though. He should be scared that the HQ is going to be capped. Ouch. Ouch. This is going to hurt. He needs another fighter. This is freaking scary though. Look at all these dudes. Oh my god, that's terrifying. There's a rock and just a carrier. The carrier can't even shoot the stealth though, because it's hidden. Damn, that's scary. Now. And he's got nothing for this bomber over here. He's got no anti-air. The stealth is in no man's land. Oh god, that, that bomber's gonna get away with murder. The carrier. Boom, do 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 That's crazy. That is insane. But here comes a black storm. Suji needs this so bad. Do 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 And then the damage is gonna be massive. Let's look at that. How much did it heal? 26 260,000. Probably gonna heal yeah, ten thousand maybe? Yeah, two hundred and sixty thousand. And then the damage. Boom, 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 boom. Sixty thousand and damages. That's a lot. He's even attacking the fighter first with the stealth, which is not recommended, but it's into grit. And uh, this fighter down here, or ooh, it's out of range. This is gonna get away with that, not bad. Here comes the copter, beepers, boom. And just like that, Suji, what the? What the? We have an HQ cap alert over here and there's only these little units left, what? HQ cap, beep beep, HQ cap, beep beep. This Nagi probably shat himself this turn. He's like, oh, I'm gonna win this. Oh, easy, easy. <laughs> Hello? Look at all these units. And he's got this little shit over here. And he's got Black Storm. His units are all weak. Oh, he's Nagi. And he, why do you heal this, though? Why do you heal this? There's nothing to defend that. Oh, boy. That makes no sense. But... He builds a fighter, which will not reach this. I would have pulled this back and put this here and then healed it, and then you can just kill it, you know? Strange, but it's an Augie. Super snap. We're not doing snap attack. We're going to super snap, because he's behind two. He's behind 100,000. 110,000. That's a shit ton. He didn't even need to use his bomber there. He got ba boom -ba over there. boom -ba. Boom, he's capping with his 8 HP infantry. He stops the cap right in his tracks. Boom, boom, boom. Luckily for Mr. Uh, Suji, all of his Nagi's units are weakened with 8 HP, so he's going to live to see another day. But oh my god, look at this HP cap, cap threat over here. 9 HP, he's got a whole bunch of weakened shits to heal it up. This is an HQ cap game. Mac comes in. Suji's like, I got some units too, Budster. Boomba. Doesn't quite kill. Boomba. 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 Oh man, he's close. If this wasn't here. Oh no, he's got 7 HP. Okay. He could have won if he if it was a few things different. So he's he needs to be careful about that. And he's capping this his Hom Tower as well. And he might get near power soon. So if he gets him to 9 HP theoretically, he can heal up and still win. And his Nagi over there, does he have anything for this stealth? No. This stealth's gonna die though. Look at that. Where did the bomber go? I thought he had a bomber. Yeah, the bomber. It was healed. Oh, it's over here. What happened to the bomber? <laughs> I swear he had a bomber over there. Yeah, what happened to it?
Yeah, there's the bomber. Holy shit. Holy shit, look at that range. Boom! Oh my god, that's an easy replay. All the way over here. 8 HP. Wow. That carrier... That carrier, man. That is a flex if I've ever seen. And he made it work. He killed the bomber with it. Oh my god. Epic. Okay, that's where the bomber went. Basuji's threatening all this shit. He's basically like this one artillery to defend that. He's, they're both... This is an HQ that is nuts. I can't even say anymore. They're going on. Now Sujit has zero comm towers temporarily. He's going to get back the other one though. But for temporarily, Izanagi's got both comm towers. He's going to get a little power. Kills off the APC, so those cells are going to be on their own. Stops the cap there. He's shifting his units northward. He's moving his rockets up here, but he has no power, so they won't reach. But he's... He builds a battleship, a desperation battleship over here to stop the cap. He needed that. Suji is desperate. He has the stealth to stop, but it's getting close. Kills off the recon, kills off the infantry, kills off the artillery, so there's nothing except this battleship and this over here. Can you kill off the battleship in two hits? Ooh! But if he caps and then he gets to 9 HP from that, he can heal it up. Oh shit. And he's got to bring these back up, boys. Bring the backup boys. And then he's got these things. He needs to block these with two and with some stuff. He needs to bring the backup boys. He weakens this to three. It's, it needs nine. No more caps, so this is gonna be a dead cap. That is over with. Doesn't go for the cap over here for some reason. Goes for over here. I would have gone for the cap. I don't see why you would not do that. But goes the mech blocks, recon blocks. So the only thing can attack is his battleship right now. Unless his Nagi does some magic stuff. Bomber could reach. Recon's blocking. Infantry's blocking. It's looking scary for Izzy. Suji's like, F it, I'm triple base skipping and building a freaking stealth. Hey man, five stealths is the magic number apparently. He's got no APCs though, they're all on their own. This is gonna probably crash. He's got eight fuel, so it can stand still and do kill off the the, the freaking battleship. Ooh, bye bye fighter. Damn, that was a damn. Grit strong as shit. Grit strong as shit, and he's at six, and now he's gonna threaten the cap, so he has to attack into that. Ooh, all right, so he's fighter. Oh, the bomber can attack into that. Snap attack. Ooh, that's brutal. That's brutal. That's brutal. Ooh, brings it down to one, so he can combine cap. Still in it. Still in it. He needs the combines. He can kill off the battleship and then. Oh, he can't reach the bomber. He's got no fuel. Did this just? Yeah, I guess it just crashed there. Yeah, that just crashed. I think it takes up HP fuel a turn, so that's gonna crash. Kills off that, kills off the battleship. Black wave, so he heals this up slightly. Damages this thing, everything else. Brings that down to two. Kills the tank. Kills the infantry capping. <sighs> attacks recon onto anti-air. You never see that. He attacks recon onto anti-air. Forget recon and recon violence. I don't even know where this is. Weird violence, that's what it is. <sighs> okay, I don't know about that, but he wants to kill it off really bad. Put the infantry here. He's got to no, put it here. What? Put something here, like the recon maybe? Block with the recon here. And put the infantry there. Okay. 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 He needs eight HP. The bomber will be able to reach though. So he's, he will live. That's why you needed something to block there. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait a minute. This five HP recon. Who was there? I don't think that's a kill. Does he just win? If 
he move this 5 HP recon right here? Does he just win? The bomber can't reach with, with the recon there. This recon can't reach and kill that. This copter can reach, but it won't kill. It's a great copter. 6 HP recon, or copter to 5 HP recon with a power up, 5 extra, 10 extra defense. He just wins. If this recon literally was right there, he just wins. Wow. Wow. But he doesn't. And he lives to see another day. He builds another battleship. And then the capping begins. He almost won that turn. And now it's not looking good for Degis or Sujid. That crashes. Izanagi's got more units over here. Boom, 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 boom. No chance of that cap right there. Once you build that battleship, all hopes of a cap are gone. He had the window. And just like that, boom, boom, boom. He fights with the Black Storm, but it's he's got 16 units. He's fighting on, but all his units are in the battleship. All his units are in the black boats. And his Nagi is just the... Just growing and growing and growing. He's got an income advantage. And Kanagi's, I'm just zooming through this because it's basically been decided at this point. There's no hope. Izanagi's basically crushed him. They kept going on for a while. It never ended, but look at this. Like, it's just... There's no recovering. Grit has income advantage. There is no hope. There is just no hope. He's got unit advantage, income advantage. HQ over here. Oh my god, this game is 50... What the hell? Oh, it's a good thing I'm skipping through this shit. Oh my god. Wait, what? Did the fighter go inside there? Yeah. Holy shit, this game is actually going on. Does Suji have a chance? I thought he just lost. He's fighting on? No, he's, he's so dead. He's so dead. There's no chance. He's so dead. That fighter's gonna reach that. Oops. Yeah, he's so dead. Yeah, this is dead. Yeah, this, he's so dead. Jesus Christ, that was a long game. That was a nutty game. Suji could have won. He could have won. That was so. That one freaky reeky. The free con, as I like to call it. Oh my god. Nutty. Six spells in a game. I don't think I'll ever see six dolls in the game ever. Maybe there's seven. I skipped four. Maybe there's seven. Maybe there's eight. Carrier. The carrier is holding on to the fighter for some reason. But shit, you put the fighters in the carrier during the Black Storm and they don't get attacked by the Black Storm. They're actually fine. That would be crazy. That'd be a flex for sure. I'm at a loss for words. This is one of the nettiest games I've ever seen. Suji threw away too many units. I think he had plenty of opportunities to win. He cobbled together what little remnants he had and made a push for the HQ, and he nearly had it, too. He nearly had it. Wow. That was epic. One of the most epic games I've seen in a long time. A lot of mistakes there, not gonna lie. Both of them, front shifting, Suji should have front shifted a lot more than he did. He was kind of entrenched just like Grit was. I guess he was afraid of the HQ cap or something, but he kind of just stayed on one side most of the time. And then when he finally did front shift, he thought threatened the HQ cap. Like, every time he front shifted, it worked out well for him, it seemed. But he just didn't do it very much for some reason. He kind of just, oh, it worked out well. I'll just keep stabbling then, or dabbling. Like, no, front shift. Battleship was dumb. This battleship was dumb. And he built another one anyway. If you guys watch the Starfish replay versus Last Galarner, Battleships are not worth it. Battleships are not worth it. They're bad. They're really bad. Maybe if you're grit, there's some reason. Maybe you can get a super snipe and reach the HQ or some bullshit. I don't know. But any other situation, you're not building a battleship. Like, please don't build a battleship. It's just so bad. It's 28,000. They rarely even do half of their value back. Maybe they do 14,000. If you're lucky, it kills two tanks. But most of the time, not even that. People will just front shift away from the battleship. They're not going to fight into it. It's not going to fight into it. He kept fighting up on the top over here away from the battleship. I mean, it kind of slowed him down a bit. It prevented him from get capping these two properties, but still, it was not worth it in the end. And this one is even worse. It stopped the comm tower. That was about it. And then it died to a bomber without any any uh, backup from a fighter or anything of the sort. So don't build a battleship. Don't give away free, free cons, okay? 
Oh my god, so many stars. Anyway, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.